Joining me right now is the former White House press secretary under President Trump, America First Action senior advisor and the author of The Briefing, Politics, the Press and the President. Sean Spicer is with us this morning. Sean, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. You bet. Good morning. Yeah, I mean, the president was one of the first who poked China in terms of pushing back on China and all of the issues that we speak about, not just the trade imbalance, but really the IP theft, the uh, forced transfer of, of, of technology, and now we're learning so much more about espionage and how they're spying on countries across the world, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you point out, for decades, the president's been very clear about his concern of the trade imbalance and other issues with China and Japan. Uh, but in this particular issue, Huawei is kind of the embodiment of a lot of those concerns all at once. Uh, it poses a huge national security risk to the United States. And as we build out this 5G network in our country and, and throughout other places in the world, there is a deep concern about China's involvement. I mean, it is a state-owned company. Right. And it's kind of rich that, that Huawei is not only suing us, but citing our Constitution as a concern. If you think about it, we have an entire CFIUS process to talk about foreign ownership. Um, and this isn't even a jump ball. It is controlled by the Chinese government. Right. So the idea that we're taking a further step in protecting our national security um, and our, our key cyber infrastructures is crucial. They already have foreign problems, uh, foreign ownership issues with U.S. companies doing business in China. The idea right. that they'd come here and basically be doing it through a back door, technologically speaking, is something that the president is very right to be protected. Yeah, and it's one of the issues that I brought up last week in my exclusive interview with Huawei's chief security officer, Andy Purdy, last week. And I mentioned to him that he's got uh, Communist Party members on his board of directors. And yet here's what he said about IP theft. Listen to this. On the theft of intellectual property by the China government, that's not us. The China government does not speak for us. We don't speak through the China government. I applaud the efforts of the United States and others to try to crack down on the global theft of intellectual property, which has been a disgrace over the last 15 years that we haven't done enough about it. So I'm glad to see President Trump is raising that as an important issue in the trade talks. Well, there you go. The follow-up there was how many people on your board are, are from the Communist Party? And he, there are several, actually, Sean. Right. But, but I actually look at IP theft as two things. One is sort of the manufactured goods, right? So if you think about uh, everything from movies to knockoff watches and iPhones, things where they're stealing our intellectual property and making products uh, that present themselves as U.S.-made products. But then you have the intellectual property that Huawei really poses a deep threat on, which is going into the networks and pulling out the guts of what a lot of our companies and networks that our things run on and, and the computing and being able to embed uh, info, you know the embed their their information into our f critical infrastructures right. I think that's the big pros the problem that, that Huawei poses and I don't think that people understand that just owning some of their phones in itself you've got to kind of be able to pull it back and wonder what's embedded in that phone are they able to send back encrypted data and messages and other key infrastructure type things right. back which, to which their is why network. when the Secretary of State was in this studio just a couple of weeks ago he said if European countries are using Huawei telecom James then the US is going to have to uh, pull back and not share all of the information information that normally we would with our European friends. Yeah, that's right. I think that was a, a really key interview, just pointing out that there could be consequences to uh, countries that uh, don't cooperate with the U.S. on this. But, Sean, I'm wondering, just as a political question, um, in terms of persuasion, uh, do you think the president has a good political case here, whether it's to a domestic audience or to countries overseas, that he's trying to persuade not to use Huawei technology? Yeah, I think domestically, James, it makes a ton of sense. I don't think that there's a ton of concern about standing up to China in, a, in any of these issues, whether it's trade, IP theft, et cetera, tech transfer. Uh, the president's going to be hopefully uh, rewarded in a bipartisan way because I think all Americans understand not just the national security threats that China poses, but the, the, the sort of the, the other trade uh, issues that we have with China. And so I think the president would have bipartisan accolades for standing up to them. I, I think my fear is more that China presents sort of this cheap option, not to just domestic consumers or their phones, but also to European folks who may not have the same capability to build the networks that yeah. we do. Yep. And, have, and, and, and that's where I think the problem is, is that they present this cheap, immediate alternative that's really appealing mm -hmm. to folks 
that uh, that would have long-term devastating consequences. And that's why I think the president's not just standing up for America, but frankly, he's standing up for the entire world yeah, right now. Yeah, because this is a major issue. We got to switch gears and get your comment on this Democratic-controlled House Judiciary Committee meeting and how they issued the subpoenas to 81 individuals and entities as part of an investigation into President Trump. Sean, you are one of the people receiving a subpoena. Uh, tell us, have you received it? Well, I'm not going to comment clearly on anything that, with respect to this investigation. I will say the, 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 what, the Democrats started this whole thing off a while back talking about Russia and collusion. They had a House investigation that didn't prove anything. In fact, came out and said there was no collusion. Then they put all of their chips in the Senate basket. That came out, Senator Burr and, yeah. and even uh, Senator Warner, and said nothing. Now they've moved on, and even uh, Chairman Nadler has said that now they're going beyond that scope. And I think that, that there's a point at which they're going to jump the shark and lose the support of the American people who realize this is purely a fishing expedition into an, a, a political opponent. They are now going after the president, his associates, his business dealing and his past, uh, you know, uh, interactions with individuals because simply they don't like them. They're literally on a fishing expedition. Right. They had three they shots at this. The House now committee said the crime. I just want to correct yeah. something right. though. They haven't been subpoenaed based on what we know. Their request for documents that's different. This uh, it, maybe it takes the, maybe the judiciary committee takes that step, but I if do not believe. Right. But if, I don't believe they they've don't been subpoenaed. Willingly yet. send the documents, right. then the documents will be subpoenaed. But I, just as well. to clarify that, and if I'm wrong, I'll correct it. But I don't believe it's taken. It, it's gone that far yet. Has there, has there ever been a president subjected to this kind of scrutiny and investigation, to your knowledge, Sean? Well, but but I think I think one of the things that's interesting, Liz, is it's one thing to be subjected to scrutiny, right? If there's been a crime, if there's something exactly. to look into. At this point, what they're saying is, we don't know, so we're just going to look into all of these entities and all of these individuals and see what we come up with. I think that's vastly different in terms of approach, because everyone keeps looking at past issues where there was evidence of something and then there was an investigation that followed it. In this case, I think the Democrats, like I said, have jumped the shark. They basically have said, we've got to get him, so let's figure out all of the people and associations and corporations and associations around him and if we dig far enough we'll probably find something right and I, I and I so so I think that's the big difference because it's not an investigation into wrongdoing it's an investigation to find wrongdoing right they have their guy now they want to find the crime so they're gonna go under and every rock to try to do that meanwhile we know that there was wrongdoing done in the 2016 election we know that there was FISA abuse and we know that a couple of people tried to put their finger on the scale and change an election and get the duly elected president out, but there's no mention of that. Well, there's also, look, and, and I'm not trying to, to rehash old talking points here, but there's, there's also, if they want to talk about associations with Russia, we know of them. Right. We know oh, that the I'm Clinton saying. Foundation took money. We know that the former president received money. We know that John Podesta was, you know, so we know all of these things. And the fact of the matter is, is that they have just sort of turned a blind eye to all of those past wrongdoings that are known. And we've spent no time investigating those actual issues of wrongdoing. Right. Exactly. Sean, thank you. We will see you soon. You bet, guys.